If you look at the basic anatomy of how a traffic signal works, you have a minimum green time that's set, you have a yellow amber clearance time, and you have an all red phase. So the more complicated the intersection, the more phases that you're introducing to give a protected left turn or to allow the side street to run, the more time you're spending on the clearance phases and you can't give as much to the green time. If we see there's an issue and we want to give more time, we have to pull that time from somewhere else. So all of the lights along the corridor are set to the same cycle. If you make one change at one intersection, it carries through to the others. You know, if, if I was to take five seconds from the main road to give to a side street that is the intersection, then it's cutting down five seconds for every cycle. And that carries through over an hour and over a day. And you go throughout the day, that's a change that just doesn't happen when that one person comes through there. That's a permanent change that's made through the corridor. And the effects can be felt through that entire corridor. When we're coming in to retime a corridor, there's several steps that we have to take. Um, we have a data collection phase. We need to know what kind of traffic is out there. We take 24-hour volume counts to identify peak hours. We then go out and count peak hour traffic so that we can get the turning maneuvers. We look at crash data to see if anything is going on in the intersection. Um, and we look at geometry and the phasing and the existing timing of the signal. Once we get all that information, we come back into the office and we plug all of our information into a model. And we run that model to see if the existing intersection needs any work or if it just needs to be retimed. We go through that process for whichever peak hours we have. Most of the time, it's a morning and an evening peak hour. After we do that, then we work up our data, we have our proposed timings, any phasing changes that need to be made, and we go out in the field and we implement it. We actually punch it into these signals and then we program it and watch it run and see if we need to make any adjustments. It's the favorite part of my job. I enjoy working with traffic signals just because they, ha they can have such a big impact. Um, you know, if there's a problem or if there's a shift in traffic patterns, we can usually make a big difference fairly fast. Now conversely, we do have some roads that are over capacity, meaning we have too many cars in too few lanes, and traffic signals aren't, you know, they may not be able to help in a situation like that. Uh, we can definitely program them to help with the efficiency, but sometimes you need more lanes or you need a different form of traffic control.